Daniel Bailey Jr. was born on April 16, 1948 in Mount Holly, New Jersey. His parents' names were Irene, Alice Bailey, and Daniel Bailey Sr. Their hobbies include his mother being a homemaker before working at Sears and Straw Bridges. His father was a boiler tender for Campbell's Soup. He also had two brothers and one sister. Before the war and before he entered the Navy, he was a junior in his high school. The coaches and teachers at the school did not allow him to play football, so he quit and joined the Navy. His basic training was in Great Lakes, Illinois. There, they taught him how to take orders and teach him what to do and what not to do. Also, they gave him lots of tests like ear and eye tests and other factors that go in to be part of the Navy. He qualified for Marine duty and they sent him to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii to be on a sea oiler. It was hard for him at the time to get used to being in the Navy and hopping on a plane to go work on a fleet oiler because he was right out of high school and still had lots to learn. Yeah. Jumping on a plane and flying to Hawaii, that was kind of tough when you're right out of high school and, you know, you're, you're into the woes of the world. When he first set eyes on his oiler, the USS Koishiwi, he remembers it being one of the biggest ships he ever saw. At first, he did not even know what to make of it. It was so big. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of it. On board the ship, he started out as a decade, which is a person who cleaned up the ship and took orders from the officers. After three or four months being a decade, he could not take being that anymore, and joined the Black Gang. The Black Gang, which he wanted to join, was a group below deck that tended the Kowishiwi boilers that powered the ship. The USS Kowishiwi itself was important to the war effort in Vietnam. His job in the Black Gang was a boiler tender. A boiler tender tends to the boilers to get them prepped and ready so the ship can move. Once the boilers are prepped, it makes the engines go, which get a crank going, which then powers the propellers. His job would be the reason the ship was able to leave port and go refuel the other ships. This ship was an oiler class type and was used to refuel other ships out at sea so they did not have to come back to port and could stay in the combat zone longer. Sometimes they would even go into the combat zone. Some types of ships the USS Koishiwi refueled were aircraft carriers, destroyers, DLGs, and cruisers, which were usually around the Vietnam coastline. Living conditions were okay according to Daniel Bailey Jr. They lived mostly in metal bunks that held their personal belongings. Also, the food on the ship was good for our veterans. The cooks were their naval buddies on the ship and they had assigned days to cook and what to make. His social life on the ship went well as he made lots of friends on board the oiler. The USS Koishiwi just did not stay in port the entire war. It had to go out to refuel the ships that were helping win the Vietnam War for the US. When the ship left its home port in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, it went to many other places like the Philippine Islands, New Cuzo, Manila, West Pak, and other places throughout Asia. On their R&R, or Rest and Recuperation, they also went to places like Hong Kong and Sasebo, Japan. Before they could get R&R though, they had to be in the quote-unquote war zone, refueling ships for about three to four months at a time. As a decade, he earned the respect of his shipmates. Under the decks, when he was part of the Black Gang, he also made lots of friends and earned lots of respect. On the ship, they would usually box, lift weights, and did a lot of other activities. Fortunately, the crew of the ship were not allowed to go 15 to 20 miles to the shores of Vietnam, so they could get not fired upon by the Vietnamese. Unfortunately, there were two deaths that our veteran recalls. One of the men, Mike McGovern, was killed by a rope that hung free as the USS Koishiwi was refueling. And the other man's name was Tom Thompson, who snuck out to see his significant other and got beat up by the locals on the island. 
Once he got out of service, Bailey spent some time down by the shore, recouping and recovering with his service time. The army did offer him another tour. However, since he had gotten out two months early, he was not looking for word to another tour. So Bailey spent his time at the shore with his mother. After this time though, his mother began to push him towards a career. See, my mother worked with a lady that her husband had just died that was a boilermaker. Um, she turned me on to that and said, look, she would uh, sponsor me into that. He was looking into tending boilermakers, as that is what his father had chosen as a profession. However, his mother suggested just doing another job involved with the boilermakers that paid slightly better. So he entered in that profession where he earned about $28 an hour. As ba Bailey neared the end of his career, he picked up any job he could to attempt to put more money into his pension. Bailey currently lives as a retired man in Pittman, New Jersey. He married Sarah Bailey, who died of cancer in 2009, and now with the, is with his girlfriend, Candace. He now has four children, from whom he was blessed with 12 grandchildren. However, even though his service in the Navy and the workforce is over, he still ha has some work to do. He felt it was his duty to tell his next generation that if you feel like this country is being threatened, you shouldn't hesitate to join the Army, Navy, or whatever branch you should. Any person can come in and attack this country at any point, and it is the job of all the citizens of this great United States to protect whatever is theirs for the freedom to come.